if you follow AI, you've probably seen the headlines about GPT-5. And in this video, I will talk about where it came from, what's actually new in GPT-5, how it works at a high level, and how it compares to the competition like Grub4, Claude, Gemini, for people who make things like most of the audience of, of this channel. But before we continue, a quick shout out to the sponsor of this video, Morpheo AI. They are a platform that lets you create web apps with AI in seconds. What's really cool is that they just launched GPT-5 benchmarking capabilities on their platform, so you can actually test and compare different AI models while building your apps. The focus was to eliminate the need of code when generating anything. You just describe what you want and Morpheo creates it. It's perfect for creatives who want to turn their ideas into functional web applications without getting stuck in technical complexity. You can check them out and get 50% off their pro tier. That's unlimited credits for a whole month without discount code. Find the code below so you can get that special deal. So quick history, we went from GPT-3 to 3.5 to 4, and then a lot of other models in between, like the 4.0s and the, uh, <laughs> can you even remember all the, all the models of, of, of the OpenAI, but, but those are the mains, like from GPT-3 to, to now 5. And each step made the tools way more useful in ChatGPT, better, clear writing, stronger coding, much better at handling long prompts, long context windows. And this steady progress built big expectations for GBT-5. Some framed it as an actual step toward artificial general intelligence or AGI. So the real question is, does it actually help us create faster now? And is it really this big of a, of a leap as, as it was hyped to be? So first, what's new? GBT-5 is quicker and more consistent. You'll see answers arriving in most cases sooner although i've heard some uh, complaints about the opposite but we'll dive into that as well it copes with uh, longer and messier input without losing the train of thought so it's, it's good at doing long briefs long notes and transcripts uh, reasoning is improved as well so planning steps combining ideas and untangling complex information feels more natural in a way and for everyday creative work that means better Script writing, clear outlines, clear code suggestions, and, and fewer of these sort of hallucinations. So GPT-5, it's still a, a transformer model, um, but the sort of serving stack has been changed. So instead of one model answering everything, there's now more routing taking place under the hood, meaning that the system can actually choose between specialized variants and tools based on the prompt that the user inputs. So that's part of why replies often feels quicker because for more basic questions like lighter paths are picked for for these more straightforward tasks while other questions can trigger heavier reasoning uh, paths like the sort of deep think versions of the uh, of gbt5 so while gbt5 probably isn't the agi breakthrough that some had hoped for or that it was hyped to be it's definitely a refined tool that pushes efficiency and accessibility forward for digital creators, it offers tangible wins, workflow speed, and reliability, even if it requires some, some tweaking and getting used to. So if we look at the current LLM leaderboard, we can see that GPT-5 actually consistently ranks at the top, but it's not like there's that much margin down to the other models. So it seems that at the moment, it's especially, of course, GPT-5 and Rock 4 that have generally the highest like the best performance up across multiple metrics so if you look at best in reasoning we have gpt5 at 89.4 percent uh, with grok4 getting a score of 87.5 so they are very close um, and if we look at something like humanity's last exam which is a basically a benchmark with 2,500 expert vetted questions uh, across a lot of different areas like mathematics, science, humanities, and so on. Um, we can see that GBT5 does come out at the top with Grub5 uh, on, on the second place, uh, with mistake to be 26.5% correct and 23.9% correct. So, um, so yeah, I, what I've actually been doing I thought could be quite fun is to use the second best models in this case, Rock, according to this these metrics. Of course, I'm, I know that it can be that there are a lot of other things that could make the other models 
perform better in, in very specific tasks. Um, but what, I, what I've actually done is that I asked Grok to create a test for GBT5. Basically, in this case, I instructed Grok to create like a basically a long text with a lot of facts about the history of artificial intelligence, how it started all the way back to Alan Turing in 1948 and uh, like the uh, report he, he uh, like the paper he uh, released like then um, and then dating all the way up to today. So a lot of different facts where I suppose, but I haven't tested it yet, but I, I would I would imagine that other models like maybe GPT-40, for instance, would would perhaps hallucinate a bit and not really uh, be able to extract all the key facts from that text. So what Rock has then done is to create a multiple choice test based on this long text with and then basically say, uh, read the passage carefully and select the correct answer for each question. Output only the sequence of letters, for instance, this, which is a wrong sequence of letters without explanations. And then basically the question, so uh, for instance, in what year was Alan Turing's confidential report on machine intelligence? And then there is one correct answer and so on. So I'll try first to copy this and basically give it to GPT-40 and then compare we have a cheat sheet down here with uh, the correct uh, answer sequence, which I verified to be the correct sequence. So, um, so let me try to copy this and basically paste it over to GPT-40 and see how it does. And then we'll try GPT-5 afterwards. So because I think, I think actually one of the biggest practical problems with AI has been this hallucination that it's so easy to get sort of sucked into the replies AI gave and like, not always question it, but in many cases, there is a lot of hallucination going on and you end up getting the wrong idea, the wrong answers and so on because of the hallucination. So I think hallucination is one of the most important things to, to battle in, in AI. So, uh, so let's see how, like, how much better, hopefully, <laughs> GPT-5 is. Okay, so I copied this. So we are now here in GPT-40. And uh, that's actually, uh, I think, I think they they just launched this <laughs> one, like either today or yesterday. Like basically, before you could only use GPT five, but I guess there was a lot of criticism um, to OpenAI, people missing GPT four O. So you can now choose uh, the legacy model GPT four O if you want to use that. In our case, we're just going to be testing it. So GPT four O, I will paste in the test from Grok. Um, we have the multiple choice here, and let's just see what happens. Okay, so it's got a sequence now, and uh, let's try to compare this with the uh, correct sequence. So let me just copy the correct sequence, just paste it here so we can compare. So, yeah, so we can quickly see it's not correct. D, B, A, C, B, C, D, C. C B B A, B B C B A, so on. Like, yeah, I don't even want to count the errors. It seems very. Um, I mean, B C B in the end is correct. Uh, two A's, only one A. Like, yeah, just too many, too many errors. And and remember, this is all based on actual facts that are written in this text. So it should be able to extract the correct answers if, if it's not hallucinating or otherwise sort of failing to uh, interpret like the context window. Okay, so let's now try to change to GPT-5 and I think I'll, I'll select the thinking version. So again, this is because GPT-5 is actually multiple models and just to make sure that it has sort of uh, some reasoning capabilities which use uh, thinking in this case uh, and let me create a new chat and we paste in the test again and we can take a look at the thought process while that's working okay so it has a, an answer, and let's try again to compare. So I will copy again the correct sequence from Grok, and let's try to compare. Okay, 
PBAC, PBAC, uh, PBCB, PBCB, uh, ACBB, ACBB, and CB. So this is 100% correct. So, um, so at least compared with GPT-40, this, like, if we consider this hallucination that it doesn't really answer correctly based on the context given, then, like, definitely GPT-5 is, is better. But let's actually try to give the same test to um, the fast model. Uh, I'll just copy this again and then do a new chat and maybe let's in this case do the temporary chat just so it doesn't have some memory from <laughs> from the actual correct answers before. Okay, so we'll give it this. Okay, let's see. It's of course way faster, but let's see if it's also correct. So PBAC, PBAC, uh, BBC. B C C hmm. okay. Uh, D A C guess B A C B B C B. Okay, so it seems it seems like it's better than four O, but still it it does it does have some some errors. Um, I wanted I actually wanted to test this with the older O three model as well, but I don't think we. Yeah, there's no access to the O3 model, O3 Pro models anymore. Um, but um, but at least comparing with the legacy GPT-40 model, of course GPT-40 is still and and even the the fast GPT-5 model they're so good at like just sort of uh, like chatting about topics without uh, like needing very specific uh, like accuracy. But but I just think it's nice to know that. While we, of course, can't trust GBT5 thinking with everything, I'm sure there's still potential for hallucination. At least now it seems way better to actually, um, to actually like respect facts and not just make up uh, something. Like I, I, I've used uh, the O3 models before and, and trying to, to make like, uh, to help with, assist with accounting and stuff. And I still find that I can't really trust it 100%. I need to still manually check and, and correct mistakes so i'm hoping that that with gbc5 like the advanced thinking version and, and also the there's also a pro version of gbc5 for the deeper research i i hope that this will actually enable use of gbc5 in in, in factual tasks that things like extensive tasks with a lot of context that really needs to be accurate where you don't have any tolerance for errors because if it's accounting for instance like it it does make a difference if it's like a, a thousand or a hundred thousand, and and sometimes AI might not really care about extra zeros, but in in, in terms of accounting, it makes a huge difference. So, uh, so I really hope that that, I, and it seems like it as well that we are actually moving towards less hallucination, more accuracy, more sort of objective uh, reasoning, which is which has really been the the biggest, in my opinion law or or still like work in progress part of ai that we need to feel like we actually trust it and uh, we're not of course probably not there yet but we're definitely going in, in the right direction so the last thing i want to try uh, in terms of this test is to actually try to select the auto so basically let the gbt5 router itself decide how long to think because that's actually been one of the main criticisms of GBT-5 that it all, doesn't always seem to pick the best underlying model for a particular prompt. Maybe because the router, because to the router, it, maybe, it might not always be clear what level of compute and, and level of resources is needed for a particular prompt. So users have complained that they ask something like very uh, advanced and they get a quick reply that's not really accurate or they ask something very simple and it starts really overthinking and takes forever to uh, to give the the answer so let's try auto and see if it if it actually picks up on the fact that this should be a more extensive prompt where it needs to do a bit of, of thinking so i'll turn on temporary chat again paste it in and let's see okay 
So it seemed that it was quite fast. So it might actually have chosen a faster route. And let's then compare it. So BBAC, BBAC, BBCBA, BCCBA. So it seems like it actually chose the, I guess, the fast instant answer uh, approach for, for this uh, question, which is obviously wrong. So I, 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 I understand where this criticism is coming from because it may not be obvious to users this needs deep thinking or this doesn't need deep thinking. So, so many users will probably end up with less than optimal replies because of this uh, underlying selection of, of model. Um, so my own approach is just to I basically select thinking mode for, for everything I can where I don't, where I'm not outside and I just need a quick reply on the phone or something, but anything that's actually a part of my work or like something I, I really want a, a substantial answer to, I will, I will select uh, the thinking mode. Either that or I will actually also use Grok a lot. I really love Grok 4 in particular. I think it's a, it's a great model. Uh, also because it rock doesn't come with these um, like the same restrictions that uh, OpenAI has like uh, there are a lot of restrictions in terms of what content it can serve and, and it, a lot of times the filters that uh, that create these restrictions they don't always they, like they are, they're also not always accurate you can ask something that shouldn't really be caught by a filter and then suddenly you're not allowed to to get a reply to that or to get uh, an image generated uh, for that, even though it's actually not violating any of, of, their, uh, of their content policies. It's just simply the filter being a bit over uh, sensitive, I guess, to protect themselves from, uh, from people misusing their service. But in, in my case, I really like freedom to do what you want. And I, in, that, in that sense, I really love Grok because it's a bit more <laughs> like it doesn't really care what you ask. It'll probably still try to to give a reply. So um, so yeah, I I love that part of Grok and also they're both pretty pretty equal. I mean, of course, GPT five has the edge right now it seems, but they are definitely they're definitely very uh, equal. So um, so yeah, I will use both OpenAI and Grok and and actually also uh, Claude um which should also be uh, one of the, the top models. Um, I know my co-founder Yeeling uses Cloud a lot, so I will give that a try as well. Um, yeah. With the release of GPT-5, I think it's quite evident that the AI race is not slowing down anytime soon. And while GPT-5 uh, has a higher score in various benchmarks, I think it's also safe to say that all of the models have their each their strength and, and unique qualities, whether that's being open source or being less restrictive or and so on. So for me, it's a lot of mix and matching, finding the best model for the best use case, whether that's writing, programming, vibe coding, uh, and so on. So I will keep experimenting with, with the different models. So um, stay tuned for more content. And also thank you to all our followers. We finally reached the 10K milestone uh, for the channel, uh, which we're very grateful for. So um, thank you for following us and please like the video if you learned something new. See you soon. Have a great day. Bye-bye. <laughs>